I want to welcome you to tonight's webinar. We're going to be talking about the uh, Gold Golf Club trade. It's an intraday trade that you can do. Normally it lasts about an hour to two hours at the most. Um, very high probability of success. It works quite well. Now it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it's fairly obvious. And I'll show you what it is, how it works, how to identify it, and uh, how to trade it. So pretty neat trade. It's one of my favorites. If you have any questions at any time throughout the webinar, uh, you can submit them by the GoToWebinar side menu, and I'll be sure to try to answer as many as I can. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Wood. I'm the Director of Trading Operations here at MicroQuant. I'm also the host of the Futures Live Trading Room and uh, the President of Sapiro Capital. Uh, just a really quick risk disclaimer, trading or investing carries a high level of risk and is not suitable for all persons. Before deciding to trade or invest, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and ability to tolerate risk. This content is subject to change at any time without notice and is provided for the sole purpose of education and assistance in making independent investment decisions. ValueCharts.com has taken reasonable measures to ensure the accuracy of the information contained herein. However, ValueCharts.com does not guarantee its accuracy and is not liable for any loss or damage which may result directly or indirectly from such content or from an inability to access such information or any delay in or failure of the transmission or receipt of any instruction or notification in connection therewith. Any past performance results are shown for illustration example only, are hypothetical, and as such have many inherent limitations. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profits or losses similar to those shown. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to CFTC Rule 4.41. Uh, essentially, we're required to show you this at just as saying it's hypothetical, obviously, because I'm showing you stuff that has occurred in the past. So there's no guarantee that's going to happen again. Uh, that being said, the strategies that we talk about in these webinars, obviously, we believe they work. Uh, we use them on a daily basis in the trading rooms. So what is the Gold Golf Club um, trade? How does it work? How does it play out? Well, I have a picture here of a golf club. If you think about what a golf club looks like, you have the handle here, and then you go up and you have the club face down at the bottom. Uh, well, what you're looking at and at least in my mind, is a golf club. This is what it looks like on a candlestick chart, where there's your the handle of the golf club, there's the club face. And then what you're looking to do when you're trading the gold golf club is you're looking for a continuation of a down move. And the way you time this, basically, you're watching, okay, big down move, and then you're going to have a higher low. So you're going to look at the lows of your bar, and you're going to say, okay, here's a higher low. Okay, here's a higher low. Here's another higher low. As soon as you break the previous bar's low, all right, so right here, you'll go short. And your stop loss will be placed right there. All right, does that make sense? So you're looking for a large down move, and then a higher low, higher low, higher low. So you're making the face of the golf club and then you're waiting for it to break the previous bar's low. Uh, normally you time this using a 30 or a 60 minute chart. All right, so normally you're using a 30 or 60. Now that being said, you can do it on a 240 minute chart. It just looks a little bit different, but we'll go through and what we'll do is we'll pull up TradeStation and take a look at the different charts and uh, how it looks, how it would look on different time frames. All right. So again, you're looking for a large down move. This is also, by the way, called a bear flag a lot of times. And what you're looking at is basically a channel, an ascending channel after a down move, waiting for a break of the channel. Uh, it's just a different way of timing it. So you're waiting for it to break the previous bar's low. So you want a big down move, higher lows, uh, two, three consecutive higher lows in a row. And then you want to see a break of the previous bar's low and an immediate follow through from the break of that low. If you don't get a follow through on the break, um, if you're not in the money by the close of this this bar here, so the bar that's breaking the previous bar is low. If you're not in the money by the close of that bar, if that's not down, uh, then go ahead and get out of the trade because it's a failed golf club. All right, It should, technically speaking, run as soon as it happens. And these can happen if you watch a market throughout a day. Throughout the day, you'll see a lot of times gold will it'll shoot lower, 
you'll make a golf club, shoot lower, make a golf club, shoot lower, make a golf club. And you can do it. I've seen it done three, four times in a day, uh, just one after the other after the other. And there's a couple things you can look at to help you increase the probabilities of success. Uh, so here's a picture of what a golf club looks like, all right? So here's your big sell-off. There's big sell-off, and you have higher lows. You had a failed higher low right there, or you had a failed break right there. So you broke the previous bars low. It didn't run, so you're out of that. Then you have higher lows. You broke the previous bars low here, so you're short from right there. Your stop loss goes right there, right at the high of the bar, and you see gold sold off quite nicely. Uh, that was from 1358, call it, all the way down to a low of 1346, so about $12 an ounce worth of move there. And then you look again right after that first sell-off and then rally, uh, you have another set of higher lows. So there's a higher low, here's a higher low. As soon as you break the previous bar's low, right there, you're short with your stop at the high. You see it closed down, so you closed in the money, so you're in good shape, and then gold continues to sell off from there. So that was from about 1352. The bottom before the next golf club was 1333. Okay, so almost $20 now, it's worth of a move there. And then again, you have a higher low. Uh, when do you exit when do you exit the trade? You can either exit the trade at the uh, uh, value level at significantly undervalued. Okay, so there, there. Um, sometimes it doesn't always hit there. You can also use moderately undervalued. Depends on the strength of the move you're looking for it to make. Uh, the other option is you wait until you have a bar close up. So you have down bar, down bar, down bar. This bar closes up, so you're out right there. Okay. For a smaller account, can this work using tick charts? Possibly. I've never attempted it using tick charts, to be honest with you. Um, but potentially, we can take a look at tick charts uh, here in a little bit and see see how it looks like. So again, uh, you've had your second golf club now. So here's golf club number one. There's your handle. Here's your club face. Again, sell off again. There's your handle. Here's your club face. Sell off again. There's your handle. Here's your club face. So higher low, higher low. As soon as you break the low, you're short. Stop above the high. You catch that down move. And then again, higher lows, break the low, short. Higher lows, break the low, short. Um, and you can see when it kind of starts to fizzle out. This is when you stop taking them. What you look at is you look at your MQ momentum down at the bottom. All right, when your momentum starts giving you bullish divergences, so you have one low there and then you have another low here, and this low is significantly higher than that low, and this high here is significantly higher than this high here because there was no high, didn't even go up into positive momentum, you're saying, okay, it's starting to lose the downside momentum. It's time to stop taking the trade. Now, gold did continue to go down another, call it $15 an ounce, but that's all right. You're not looking to take catch the entire move. You're just looking to take out this middle portion. And each one of these downswings, you're still making a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars contract. All right. So they're very, very profitable. Um, again, the way that you trade this, you enter as soon as you break the previous bars low. Right there, your stop goes at the high. So you're risking this. For example, for this one, you're risking about uh, two dollars. $2.50, so about $250 a contract, you're making 1000 Here, you're risking about $3, so you're risking about $300 a contract, you're making $2,000. Uh, here, you're risking about $200 a contract, you're making 1000 making 800 in that area. Uh, one of the things you can do to help you to increase the success, look at your momentum, look at the momentum indicator line here in gold. You see how your momentum is just straight down, okay? The indicator line is just going straight down. That's an indication that the market has no upside strength and that it should continue to go down. You see here, when you start getting higher lows, that's an indication that, hey, the trend could be coming to an end, or at least entering into a consolidation. Uh, the other thing you can look at is when you break the previous bars low, for example, here, was your momentum negative? When you do that, and the momentum is negative, so you have the red histogram bars uh, on your MQ momentum, and you break the previous bars low after having consecutive higher lows, that adds even more credibility to it. Okay, same thing here. You broke the low there, you had negative momentum. 
Same thing here, broke the low there, negative momentum. Here, you broke the low, you didn't have the negative momentum, it ended up being right at the close anyway, it kind of fizzled out. So does everybody understand basically what the setup is? Now you can also do this exact same setup flipped upside down uh, and to the upside, okay? So you'll have an up move, so you'll have a big up move, then you'll have a lower high, a lower high, a lower high, you'll break the previous bars high, another big up move, lower high, lower high, lower high, break the high. Now we, uh, yesterday we had a great example of that. Today we actually had some fairly decent golf clubs uh, in gold today, and I'll show you that here in just a second. So before I get rid of the thing that allows me to draw on the screen and everything, any questions about this before we go ahead and pull up TradeStation and start looking at gold on different time frames? Uh, looking at it, different time frames, looking at it using ticks, looking at it for both the golf club and for the bull flag or what I call Mario flag. <laughs> Why do I call it Mario flag? Um, if you remember way back on Nintendo 64, basically, when you played Mario and you jumped to, jump to the castle, the flag would get raised. And it would just go, just like that. And that's what, what it looks like. They're also called bull and bear flags. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up Trade Station. Uh, where's stop loss? Where's your stop loss place? Stop loss is placed at the high of the candle that's low was broken. Okay. So when it breaks the low here, your stop loss is going to above the high of the bar that's low was broken. So, oops. For example, this is the low that was broken. So your stop loss is going above that bar's high. This is the low that was broken. So your stop loss is going above that bar's high. That's the low that was broken. Your stop loss goes above this bar's high. Uh, you do want it to be somewhat significant of a down move. All right, you don't want to have just a kind of choppy, choppy market. You don't want to be uptrending. For example, here, um, you don't want to count this as a bear flag, although technically it would have worked out a little bit. That's not what you're looking for. You want it to have very weak momentum, be trending down. Okay. So let's go ahead. We'll pull up TradeStation, take a look at different time frames, take a look at how this actually works in uh, in the market is the reverse is the reverse also true you mean can you trade this up so if it rallies and then pulls back and then rallies again is that what you're asking yep absolutely um, it's a bull flag okay I call it a high flying flag sometimes a bull flag uh, Mario flag it, yep the exact same thing will work to the upside and we actually had one of those yesterday so I'll show you that here in just a moment. Uh, is it impossible to wait for overvalued on the entry? This is not, you're not really using value as your entry on this. All right. Uh, you could be using value as your entry. I mean, for example, here you hit overvalued, just happened to right at the top of that bar. But what you're trying to do, because what this saves you from doing is it saves you from if a market actually ends up just reversing and going straight back up. It saves you from shorting overvalued, shorting overvalued, shorting overvalued as it continues to climb. Okay. So this is, you're looking for the continuation. So you're just trying to catch that portion, this portion right here, this portion right here of the continuation. All right. So give me one second. I'll pull up TradeStation and then we can continue looking at gold and how this works. Alrighty. Can everybody see Trade Station now? You should see gold chart 30, 120 daily, 60 minute. Um, here is gold on a 30 minute chart for today. All right. So here is, I can actually draw using this. Here's your down move. Here's your higher low right there. You didn't really have a continuation of higher lows. You didn't have more than just one. Um, it did end up breaking that low right there, broke it. Your stop loss would have been at the high. So let's see. 
Let's see how much that is. So you would have been short from 4560. Your stop loss would have been at 4860, so you're risking 300. It ends up going all the way down to a low of 41. All right, so not as much of a follow through as you normally would like to see. Still pretty decent. If it hit undervalued, you should definitely have a break even stop in place. Uh, normally what I do is I trade two profit targets, okay? So you'll do uh, first profit target undervalued, second profit target when you have a bullish divergence or something, momentum shifts or something like that. All right, but you see what the momentum looked like in gold today is just trending lower, trending lower, trending lower. And then this was at about 8.30 a.m. You had the break of the low and then you had another one right here. You had another one that played out right here. So you had down move, and then you had one higher low, two higher lows, and then right there you broke the low of the bar, so your stop goes there. You break the low, and that dropped a fairly decent amount. Let's see what that was, what that ended up being. So that low was at, so you're short from 44.40. It went all the way down to a low of 39.40. Uh, so about $5 drop um, before just turn around just consolidating either way both those were profitable trades and worked out just like they were supposed to all right now this is what the exact opposite thing looks like this was yesterday let me erase all that so this was yesterday's price action so you had up move and then you had lower high lower high lower high lower high right there you broke the high Stop loss goes at the low, and gold rallied quite a bit from there. And then you had another one, lower high, lower high, lower high, broke the high, stop loss goes at the low, and you rallied quite a bit more. So let's take a look at what those amounts were. And actually, you also had a golf club here. So you had the bull flag there. So here's your sell-off, higher low, higher low, break the low, dropped again. Um, before you had higher low, higher low, higher low, break the low, sell off again. So let's take a look at what the amounts were for those. All right, so this first sell, you're short from 37 even. Your stop loss is at 38.70, so you're risking $170 a contract. And it goes all the way down to 25, let's call it 26. So you're risking 170 a contract. You had the potential to make 1100 a contract. All right, so not a bad reward risk ratio. I mean, that's a few hundred, or that's 10 to 1, basically. That's worked out pretty well. Then the next one here, you're short from 3120. Stop losses at 3380. Goes all the way down to a low of 26 or 27. Okay, so not as good of a reward risk. Um, still worked out, though. Still hit moderately undervalued, so your first profit target still not a bad trade let's take a look at the longs that you could have had okay so here's your lower highs here's your entry for your long your longs in at 4060 your stop loss goes down at 3760 so you're risking three hundred dollars a contract uh, typically a little more than I'd like to risk but for this trade setup that's what you do that's where your stop loss goes so you're risking about $300 a contract. That rallied all the way up to from 4060 to a high of 54. So you risk 300, you made 1400. All right, and then you have lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. You break the high at 4960. Stop losses at 48. So you're risking 160. Goes all the way up to a high of 58. Call it. All right, so $900 a contract, you're risking about 160 Not bad reward risk ratios. Again, this, is, this normally has a pretty, uh, pretty good probability of working out. So you can see here, when the momentum was heading down, you see your bear flag, look at your momentum. So you had lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. When you had this one up here, look at how much higher your low was. You had significantly higher lows, broke the high, and rallied straight up. All right, that's exactly what I was supposed to do. Same thing here. Higher lows, broke the high, rallied straight up. All right, remember, if it doesn't go up, if you don't have an up bar on the close of the very next bar, then you leave it, you, you get out of it. But see, you had an up bar here, you had an up bar there, and then just 
slowly continued to go up. Uh, this one, so this first one, it took you all of 30 minutes and you had all your profits. The uh, second one took you about an hour. The first up move took you about two and a half hours. The second up move took you about an hour and a half. All right, so not not a bad not a bad setup, not a bad way to trade it. Uh, again, it's pretty simple to watch for. Pretty simple to trade. That were very specific. All right, so let's take a look at uh, some tick charts because someone was asking about whether or not it works on ticks. So here's gold on a 500 tick chart. All right, so you have a sell-off here, and then you have higher low, higher low. So let's let me use a pen. Um, we can do it. Uh, here is sell-off, higher low, higher low, higher low. There's your short entry. There's your stop placement. It did drop a pretty decent amount. Then you had a higher lows again. There's your short entry. There's your stop placement. It dropped again. Higher lows. There's your short entry. Stop placement. Uh, so not bad. Doesn't look like it works out too bad actually using ticks. Um, and then look at what your momentum does. Okay, so here it was very obvious that your momentum was trending down. Down here, look at how muddled your momentum starts to become. It just is getting choppy. All right, so it's actually starting to pick up and get higher lows. So you have your rally, lower high. You break the high here. Stop goes at the low. You caught that nice up move there. And then you have lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. Break the high here. Stop goes down there. It jumped all the way up to overvalued, but then you had a very, very significant bearish divergence. Sure, it told you to get out of it. Um, right here, take a look at your momentum. So momentum is climbing. Uh, you had lower high lower high, lower high. We're just now breaking the high. So you technically, if you're trading this right now, you'd be going long from here. Stop would be down at the low of this bar. And then you'd be looking for at least a retest of the highs here. Um, just keep in mind with tick charts, you're, you're not, you're not going to catch as big a moves if you're using shorter tick charts. Is this predominantly for gold due to how well gold trends? Yeah, it works really well in gold. Gold's a very trendy market. Plus, gold reacts to trend line breaks, support and resistance breaks very well. Let's take a look at a different, uh, different time frame. So let's look at a thousand tick chart. Favorite time frame is thirty minute charts. All right, thousand tick chart. Uh, doesn't really work out as well. Um, so, yeah, the thousand tick doesn't doesn't look like it works quite as well as the five hundred was working. Like I said, I've never never really used it on tick charts, but I guess technically there's one. There's another one. So it's just kind of iffy, I suppose. But all in all, not not bad, all right? Can you use five-minute charts or 15-minute charts? Absolutely. Uh, so let's pull up a five-minute chart really quick. Take a look at what this looks like. All right, let me condense this chart a little bit. So let's go back. Let's just go back some random day in the past. All righty. This was, oh, uh, that was yesterday. So um, big down move, higher low, higher low. You break the low. It did drop a little bit. Uh, you got to be careful, though. Then you had, again, consecutive higher lows all the way up until here where you broke the low once again. Stop would have been right there at the high. So you're talking about three, thirty dollars to $40 worth of risk. Not very much at all, and that did end up selling off a pretty decent amount. Um, then you had higher low here, higher low here, break the low right there. So that's at thirty two sixty. High is... Stop loss goes at $34. Uh, so you're talking about $140 of risk. It did sell off from $32.60 all the way down to a low of $29. Uh, so a couple hundred dollars contract there. Um, it's kind of iffy, though, to be honest with you. 
a five minute chart shows too much noise, which is kind of what the tick charts do is they show too much noise. If you use 30 minute charts, they work pretty well. 60 minute charts, they work pretty well. 15 minute charts, they can. I mean, this wasn't bad looking. You had a sell off and you had one, two higher lows, broke the low right there and then dropped and then one, two, three, four, five higher lows, broke the low. I sold off a pretty decent amount. Uh, so the 15 is not bad, but again, you get kind of caught up in noise. So you'll break previous highs and lows a little more often than you will if you're using a, a 60 or a 30. Uh, so let's just go back some time in the past, see what it looks like. Let's take a look at your 60-minute charts really quick. Uh, so here's your 60 chart. What is this thing doing? Here's your 60-minute chart. So this was yesterday. All right. You had, uh, you sold off during the night session. This was in the middle of the night, actually. Um, you had a higher low here, broke the low, and dropped. Higher low, higher low, broke the low, sold off a little bit. Uh, then your momentum turned, and you had this nice bull flag here. So lower high, lower high, lower high, broke the high, and climbed. Uh, that, again, is from 41.50. Stop loss is at 37.70. Went all the way up to 54. Uh, so not bad there. Then here again. Lower high, break the high so you're long, and then it climbed up a little bit more uh, after that. So you can also use this, by the way, on your dailies in your 240s if you want to do a little bit longer term. Uh, so take a look here. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, so let me get the handy dandy pin here. So here's your sell off. So one, two, three down days, higher low. Here's another sell-off. So there's your sell signal. Stop loss gets placed at the high. Didn't work out, all right? Uh, the very next day, you had an up bar. So there was your first warning sign to be getting out of it. Uh, so you had a little bit of a loss there. But then, again, you broke the low right here. Look at your momentum. Remember, if your momentum's still down when you're breaking the low, it adds credibility. Broke the low. That was at, uh, I'll have to pull up the pin. But you didn't get a higher low again until all the way down here. So you're looking at, your entry is at 13.08. Stop loss is at 13.28. So you're risking $2,000 a contract. It goes all the way down to 12.60 before you get a higher low. All right, so not bad. You risked 2,000, you made 4,000. Um, same thing again happens here though. One, two, three bars higher low. Momentum staying negative. You break the low right there, so you're in it at 77.70. Stop loss is at 93, so you're risking again a little over a $1,000 contract, but it dropped all the way from 77.70 until you got a higher low at 41. Uh, so again, not bad, not bad. The thing you got to keep in mind, uh, if you're trading off a daily, your stop losses are going to be much further away. So uh, that's why I personally wouldn't and don't trade it off of a daily. Uh, but you can go back here and you can see, so you had up move, lower high, lower high, broke the high, rally, lower high, equally high high. Let's see what that high was, 79, 78, 10. Yeah, so you broke the high, stop loss goes at the low. That still rallied a pretty decent amount. Uh, then you go over here and make sure you're paying attention to your momentum because you have drop, higher low, drop, higher lows, drop. Now, this was an FOMC day. Uh, so it kind of threw it off a little bit. But then again here, sell off, higher lows, break the low, run, higher lows, break the low, run. Um, it's a pretty simple strategy, but a highly effective strategy. So here, let's take a look at our 240s. All right. And this is not valid, so get rid of that. Uh, so you have nice sell off, consolidation. You consolidated for a day, sold off again, consolidated sold off again. Now we've rallied. Uh, you see how you had lower highs and it never, it was never able to just pick it up and continue higher. Um, so that being said, what you'd be looking for here, essentially, now I'm not 
looking for this right now because of your momentum picture. You have higher lows of momentum, okay? Uh, but theoretically, if we had lower highs on the momentum, so if our momentum was lower, we'd be looking for a break of the previous bar's low to get short. All right, so you can see here, sell off, higher low, higher low, sell off, higher lows, sell off, higher lows, sell off, higher lows, sell off, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down. Same thing goes in the opposite direction. Down, break the high, rally, down, break the high, rally. All right, so works out pretty decently uh, throughout a lot of different time frames. Again, pretty neat strategy. Let's take a look. Uh, Yeah, it's a much cleaner looking setup on the time chart. Yeah, because with tick charts, you're, um, you have more bars. The more bar intervals you have, that means the more higher lows or the more highs and lows you have to break. So it can kind of throw it off a little bit. And now if a market is really, really running down or really, really moving up, like back when gold dropped $100 an ounce in a day or two, 15-minute uh, charts and 5-minute charts worked great on that. But if it's just a normal day like we had yesterday or today, uh, 30 minute to an hour works pretty good because it, it kind of gets rid of a lot of the noise. All right. You like the 233 tick. Let's take a look at a 233 tick chart. That's not bad. I mean, you see, nice sell off. Here's your first set of higher lows. You stalled. You broke the low there, so you're short. It's still sold off. I mean, so you're short it from... I was at 43.60. High was at 44.30. Uh, so you're risking less than $100 a contract. It went all the way down from 43.60 until you had a higher low at 42.60. So you made $100 a contract there. If you held it through the rest of this sell-off, I mean, you risked $100 and made $400. Uh, so not, not bad, not bad at all. Uh, and your divergence has actually worked really well in this too. Uh, but you can go back and you can look at, again, any of the sell-offs whenever you enter in the consolidation and you get those consecutive higher lows. As soon as you break the bars low, uh, it should run. Uh, the more higher lows you have in a row or the more lower highs if you're going long that you have in a row, the better. So, for example, here where you had one, two three, four, five, six, seven higher lows before finally breaking a low, that's a much better signal than one where you just get a couple, uh, typically. All right, so watch this same, this this does happen in other markets as well. Gold's just a really good market for doing it. And make sure you pay attention to the broader picture. So what does the overall market look like? Which, by the way, it, that that long did actually work. I mean, you'd be up a few dollars a contract now. Uh, but be careful with it because that's a bearish divergence right now on the 500 tick. So that looks like it should go down on the 500 tick anyway. Can I talk about the up-down bar rule after entry again? Sure. So what you want to see happen, let's take gold. Uh, yesterday, for example, if on the bar that breaks the high, so if you're going long, on the bar that breaks the high, the one, so right here, this bar, where it finally broke this bar's high, you want that to close up if you're long. So you want it to close higher. So you want that to be in the money when you finally get into it or when it finally ends. Uh, when you are going short, so you have, your sell-off, and then you have higher low, higher low, higher low. You break the low. You want that bar to be a down bar, okay? So you want it to be a down bar if you're short, the bar that you're entered on. You want it to be an up bar if you're long. So here, when you dropped and then higher lows and then sold off again, that was down bar. That's good. Um, now, that being said, if you're trading it off a 60-minute chart, normally you give it one to two hours, so one to two bars. So either the bar that you enter or the very next bar, by that time, it's normally going to go into consolidation again. Does it work with currencies and does it work well at Globex? It can and it can. 
Um, let's take a look at a currency, for example. Let's look at the euro. Uh, euro had a bull flag earlier today on your 60. So up move, lower high, lower high, broke the high, rallied again. Um, it can do it. Here's an example here. Sell off, higher low, higher low, break the low, sold off again. It's not it's not my favorite. Gold's my favorite for this, but it's still it can still work, basically. If that makes sense. So um, any questions about how these, how this strategy works with the golf club is what the high flying flag is in the flag, um, how they, how they react. I'm sorry. Do you guys see that pop-up box? It keeps on popping up in the middle of the screen. It's uh, driving me crazy. It keeps telling me there's new hardware for go to webinar. So again, back to gold. This is essentially, at what point do you move to break even? Uh, you move to break even as soon as you hit the value level. So it, if you're going short, as soon as you hit undervalued, for example, today, if you were short here and it dropped down undervalued, you'd be putting a break even stop in place as soon as you hit undervalued. Um, if you were back here yesterday going long, as soon as it hit overvalued, you'd be break even. What are my value chart settings? I use a five bar analysis period. That's the only thing that changed. Does it work in crude oil? Let's take a look. Um, th this is, it's a breakout pattern and it works basically in all the markets. Uh, but gold is just one of my favorites. Here's one, here's an example. I mean, crude oil today had a couple of them. So here's your sell off, higher, low, higher, low, break the low, sell off again, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low, break the low, sold off, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low, break the low, sold off. Um, so here's one higher highs rally and then you have lower high, lower high, break the high rally again. Uh, so yes, it does work in crude oil. It works in basically all markets, but gold is, again, my favorite. Yeah, gold's been really choppy here over the past few days, to be honest with you. It's been very, very difficult trading environment. The past couple of weeks have. Gold seems less volatile over the past few months compared to a year ago. Yeah, but it volatility comes and goes. The market's not ever going to be the exact same. You have a limit sell. You don't wait for the bar to close. If you wait for the bar to close, uh, for example, back here, yesterday, if you had waited for the bar to close, that means you would have been entering way down here. You enter as soon as it breaks the low. Again, it's a pretty simple strategy. Uh, so you're entering as soon as it breaks a low, you're not waiting for it to close. It doesn't work out 100% of the time, but it works fairly well, uh, pretty, pretty decently. Yes, so you have to have a sell stop order or stop sell order in place, yep. Yeah, they might spike down and then close back up. Uh, so you have to be watching it too. For example, uh, here, where you had higher lows, you broke this low, you spiked down, spiked down again, but then it came all the way back up. You hit undervalued, so you hit your first profit target. So that essentially is 
the gold golf club trade. Can I please show you some places it didn't work? Sure. Right here. So you sold off right there. Uh, you had higher low, higher low, higher low. You broke the low right here. And it didn't go anywhere. So you would have been out at a little tiny loss there because as soon as that bar closed up like that, you would have been out of it. All the webinars are available at valuecharts.com at the YouTube page. So you go to uh, youtube.com forward slash value charts. The uh, webinar recordings are available there. Any other questions? Just want to make sure everybody understands it before we move on. Uh, MQ trend, MQ regression to be considered. You can, you could technically be using MQ regression or MQ trend as a filter. So if trend's down, you're looking for golf clubs. If the trend is up, you're looking for bull flags. So yeah, you can use MQ regression or MQ trend as a filter if you wanted to, just on the direction that you want to be trading. Not a bad idea. Like a very simple, nice variation of the bull bear flag. Yep. That's exactly, that's all it is. It's bull and bear flags. I just call it something else because that's what it looks like to me. So, <laughs> all right. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Thanks for coming. Um, we try to keep these Tuesday night webinars around 45 minutes to an hour. So that's about where we are right now. Uh, feel free to visit valuecharts.com. I would love to see a lot of you in the trading room. I know many of you are in the futures trading room or in the options trading room. Uh, so if you go to valuecharts.com, you can sign up for a free week of the trading rooms. If you have any questions that didn't get answered tonight, feel free to send an email into support at microquant.com, and Min would be happy to help you. Um, glad you guys enjoyed it. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. See many of you tomorrow morning in the trading room. And for those of you that I don't see, happy Thanksgiving. All right, Diane, have a good one. Look forward to see having you back. All right, that's all for today. Again, thanks for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, happy trading and God bless.